Hello and welcome to this video that covers data visualization and gives you an introduction to Tableau. My name is David Wood and I hope to guide you through some basics of why visualizations are important and some basics of how to use Tableau. So to start off, why visualizations are important. You're sitting around with your friends arguing which is the greatest football team of all time. And of course many opinions come up and you'll talk about Super Bowls and win-loss records and, and all sorts of data. but when we have these types of questions, we can understand them better if we can use data. So here's a visualization that shows the history of the NFL since 1966. Gold bars show Super Bowl victories. Above the line shows wins. Below the line shows losses. And you can quickly see 50 years of data for every single team in the NFL. Visualizations allow you to interpret huge amounts of data very quickly. And you might jump down and see, wait a second, Detroit Lions, a lot of losing seasons, no Super Bowls. Compared to the Denver Broncos, almost always winning and they got quite a few gold bars in there. So visualizations help you see and interpret data quickly. Another example. Here we have the election results for Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. Now, a lot goes on in an election. You have a lot of polls that go on, and you can see how people are doing during the time period. So, for example, here we can select a state, the state of Wyoming. You can see as of October 4th, Donald Trump had a lot more support than Hillary, and really across the board, nothing really changed. If you hover over for a few minutes, you can see at any specific date what the polls were saying. Now, you go to a potentially more interesting state like Arizona. Things bounced around a little bit more. It was a much tighter race than in Wyoming. And ultimately, at the last poll date that they have in this visualization, it was a dead heat, 43.4 to 43.3. So again, visualizations allow you to see a lot of information, understand it quickly, and be able to use it to make better decisions. Now finally, let's go to a business context. For this one, we're going to go into this dashboard. And this is hypothetical data for, for a company. And you can see quickly from this dashboard, there's a map of where we sell in the United States. We get our overall sales of $1.8 million. We've made $231,000 in profit and a little bit more along the top to provide some descriptive statistics. Now, the size of those circles show how many sales you've made in that location, where the colors show profitability. So you can quickly see California's killing it. Lots of sales and they're profitable. Texas and Florida, on the other hand, quite a few sales and they're not making much money. So we can go in and look. Let's go look at Washington and down here the graph changes. So you can see across all three segments the blue shows profitable sales and across our product categories furniture, office, supplies and technology again positive sales. Contrast that with Illinois. Illinois the yellow or orangish color shows you unprofitable sales. So consumers the consumer segment in Illinois is really struggling. You've got a few blue sales, but mostly you're making sales and losing money on each of those sales. And further, when you look at furniture, man, that's a real dog. So this data allows a decision maker to look at things, quickly understand where are their problems. We need to send somebody out to the furniture group in Illinois and help get them some training or understand what they're doing wrong. And we may even take somebody from California who's doing really well in furniture and send them out to provide some guidance. We can move this along to something else. Let's look at our customers in this hypothetical com company. You get an idea of how many customers there are by each region, how many sales there are, et cetera, moving across. And wow, something stands out, profit ratio. Why is it so low in the central region? We might want to go investigate that. Well, if we click on it, we can actually see what customers are in that region. And you can see we have some really good customers up here who there are high sales and high profits. Tomorrow, for example. Eh, on the other end, we have some that, like Becky, who buys a lot from us, but we lose money every time she comes in the store. So given this region, the profitability ratio is so low, what can we do to increase the number of customers here in black and reduce the numbers in red? It might just be something simple as coming down and ex learning about these customers and seeing what we can do to get them to buy some more profitable items. Now, if I haven't sold you yet, we're going to go through a demonstration. This next visualization shows the total number of sales on the top line and profitability by month, 
year, and you can see the different categories, furniture, office supplies, or technology. Now, if I gave you this, this is a typical accounting numbers, you could look at them and eventually decipher what's going on. But it's not easy. The little parentheses do help you to see where there's negatives, but overall there's just so much information and it's not clear. What we can do with visualization is take this profitability and show it with a color. So now I can see sales and the colors show me profitability. Now I can, again, quickly assimilate lots of information and direct my attention to where it matters. You can see very quickly that technology is where we're more profitable. The darker colors show that technology is where we are focused. Also, you can see kind of some trends. We're a fourth quarter company. The end of the year is when we make most of our profitability. And if you want to look by year, in 2017, things look to be getting better in January. Sales increased threefold, although in February they were half. So what happened there? We can ask better questions because we understand what is going on. So the rest of this lecture, we're going to dive into how to use Tableau and how that will help us to create visualizations that will help us make better decisions. So to do that, go ahead and open Tableau and you'll, be conf you'll start with a screen that looks like this. This introduction screen shows several things. First, you can see recent workbooks that you worked on up here. You can see some samples that Tableau has to show you how to use din different things. Over here, some different training. Down here, this Visit of the Week is fun to click on to get ideas of new ways you can use Tableau. What we're going to focus is over here is connecting to data. The first thing we need to do is get the data into Tableau so that we can then start to analyze it. We're going to start by using Connect to a File from Excel. What that will do is it will bring up a dialog box showing, asking you to link to the data. Now, use the global superstore data I provided because there's several differences in, in different versions of this global superstore, but you click on that and it brings it up here. Now, up here, this screen shows you the connection to the data. Right now, we're connected to just one data source. And then you can see the different sheets that are available in that Excel file. I'm going to click and drag orders over to start. And as I do, you'll notice that down here, it loads the data. And I can scroll through and see, hey, I've got a whole bunch of rows, and I've got a whole bunch of columns of information. Now, in Excel, I might have data on the order sheet and also on another sheet. For example, people. So I'm going to click on people and drag it over here. And you'll see that Tableau tries to join these two together. If you click on that join, you're offered several different ways. Do you want to do an inner join, a left join, a right join, a full outer join, and then what do you want to join on? For this particular join, an inner join works because there's a person for every region in the orders table. So we'll go ahead and just leave it like that. And now we have our data ready to analyze. Now, a couple things to note on this screen. We have a live connection versus an extract. What this means is that when I open this up, I can refresh my data so that if I change something in my Excel file, it will flow through into my Tableau visualizations. Whereas Extract will suck the data out, and if I change the Excel file, it won't make any difference. And one thing before we go on to start making our visualizations, I want to talk about how to save files. If you click on File, Save As, you'll be brought up this work or this dialog box, and you have two different file types you can use. One is a Tableau workbook, and one is a Tableau packaged workbook. For my class, I'd like you always to use the Tableau packaged workbook. And what this do, does is it saves this data in the workbook file. So that way, when I look at it and want to grade it or see what you've done, I don't have to reconnect to the data. Rather, it's already there. The Tableau workbook will send you the visualizations, but if I want to change them or, or work with them, I then need to reconnect it to the data. So for this class, you select Tableau Package Workbooks, you give it a file name, and then you can save it, and we can go from there. So with it saved as a Tableau Package Workbook, we're ready to go make our first visual visualization. To do this, click on Sheet 1 down here at the bottom. This screen provides the basic place where we're going to do our work in Tableau. Right here in the center of the screen is where we're going to design our visualizations. Over here, we can see all of our data listed, and it separated each of the columns into a dimension or measures. We'll talk more about those later. 
If this doesn't show up, you can click on Window and click on Show Sidebar. We'll usually have that up when we're working. Right here are different cards. If they're not showing up, you can right click and select the card to show or reset cards and it'll show the default pages, filters, and marks card. We'll go through those in detail at a later point too. To start, let's make a basic graph. We want to see how many sales we have. To do that, we can click on sales and drag it anywhere we want over here in the screen or up in the rows and columns. Depending on where we put it, it's going to do something different. Let's just drop it in rows. You'll see that Tableau says if it's dropped in rows, I'm going to create a bar chart. And total sales are 12.6 million. If I drop it in columns, you'll see that it does a horizontal bar chart. Now, that's not too useful, so let's expand this by looking at what are the different sales across the different markets we work in. To do this, I can click on Markets, and I can come drop that somewhere where I want as well. So if I drop it in Columns, I have this nice display. If I put it down next to Sales, I get a separate little graph for each market. And if I put Sales up at the top, you can see I get the horizontal bar chart. Now, a quick way to flip your charts is up here, you can swap rows and columns. So if you click on that, you can make it go back and forth and pick which one you want. Next to it are two buttons that allow you to sort. So if I click on Sales and sort it, I can make it so I can see who has the highest sales down to the lowest. And you can see that we have the Asia Pacific region having the most sales and Canada having the fewest. Now, you can also put multiple, these are called pills, multiple pills on the rows or column shelf. So if I put profits up here, I get two visualizations where I can see what are sales in the top graph and profits in the bottom graph. Now if I want to sort by profits, I click on that pill and you'll notice that it just switched. Well, let me see, which two did it switch? It switched EMEA and Africa from the sales sort. So I can now see and understand this information. If you switch and move these in order, then it will just switch which one's on top or which one's on bottom. Now if you click and drag it on top of the other, it will replace what was there. So I had sales before in profit, it just replaces what's being graphed. Now the same thing can work with your dimensions. So I have markets up here. If I want to look within markets and look at segments, I can drag that and drop it up here. So now I can see each market and within it I can see my three different segments. Now if you're more interested in segments, you can drag segments in front and then it will list all of the consumers markets together. So playing around with the order that you put these in on the columns or rows can change what your graph looks like. Now a few other things to point out. I'm just going to go back to a simple sales and market. When I have these pills listed in columns and rows, down here it tells me how many rows and columns I have. So right now I have one row in seven columns or seven different markets. Another thing is when I scroll over one of these bars, you can see this tooltip pops up. That's the little square that says market and sales and gives me that amount. Later on we'll, we'll be able to edit those, but that's a quick way you can see what data is where. So with this basic introduction to Tableau, we're going to go to a few questions and I'd like you to answer these three questions. How many categories of items does Global Superstore have and what are they? Which category of items has earned the least total profits? And third, what is the exact dollar amount of total sales for the furniture category? So I recommend pausing the video, trying to answer these three questions, and then we'll come back and we'll answer them together. All right, I hope you pause that and answer these questions. Let's go over the answers. So first, the answers. How many categories of items are there? Well, there's three categories, technology, office supplies, and furniture. And which category of items has earned the least total profits? Furniture. And what is the exact dollar amount of total sales for the office supplies category? $3,787,070. So let's go ahead and show you how I answered this. So we come back to our sheet, and I'm going to answer this on a new one. So if I click down here, I can get a new worksheet, just like a new tab in Excel. So the first question is, how many categories of items does Global Superstore have, and what are they? If I see over here, I have categories. If I just click and drag that to rows, there's three categories and there's their name. So that answers that pretty quick. Now, which one has earned the least total profits? Well, to do that, I need to see total profits. 
I'll come and put it up on the columns, and I can see, wow, furniture. That's earned the least total profits. And the final category or question was, what is the exact dollar amount of total sales? So I need to put total sales up here. And I can leave both of them because I just know I need to look over here. So what's the exact dollar total sales for office supplies? Well, if I come over in the tooltip, I can see that it's 3,787,070. So right there, I have my answer. And that's how I answered those three questions. Again, I'll put those up on the screen for you. All right, now we're ready to move on to a next principle. So right now, I showed you how to look at total profits or total sales. And you'll notice if you look up here on the columns, it says sum of profit or sum of sales. Well, what if you don't want to look at total, but you want to look at average or some other aggregation of these profits? Well, to do this, I'm going to drop profits off and just have sales. If I click on this little caret, I have these different options. And one of them is under measure. I can change to pick how I want it to aggregate. So right now, it's summing up every single row by category. If I want to take the average, I click on average, and now I can see that I have the average sales per category. And here you can see the average sale for furniture is 416, which makes sense. It's a lot higher than office supplies of 121. Now, you can mix and match these. So I could have average sales. And at this chart, I could list profits or sum of profits. So now I can see total profits with average sales. Or I could say instead of sum of total profits, I want to see how many profits I made or how many sales I made by counting. See, I make a lot more sales of office supplies than I do of the other two, which again, intuitively makes sense. People are going to buy more staples and reams of paper than they're going to buy new computers or office chairs. So again, the way you can now play with the pills is clicking on the caret, and you can choose these different options. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ha give you th three more questions. How many sales has Global Superstar made? Superstore made. Now be careful. This isn't how much are the sales or what are the total sales. It's how many sales. So you want to be real careful as you read this question and from questions from here on out that you make sure you're answering what they ask. Next, what is the average sale Global Superstore made in the corporate segment for office supplies? Which segment and category had the highest sale? What was the amount of that sale? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it and give you some time to, to try to work out those three questions, and then I'll come back and give you the answers. All right, hopefully answering these three questions was pretty basic. Let's go through and, and see if we can review. So how many sales has Global Superstore made? 51,290. What is the average sales size in the corporate segment for office supplies? $122. And which segment and category had the highest sale? What was the amount? Well, it's the home office segment in the technology category, and they had a sale of 22,638. So let's show you how we came up with these answers. Open up a blank sheet, and the first thing we need to do is see how many sales Global Superstore made. Now, this is a little bit of a trick question because you need to define what is a sale. If we look at our data source, you can see that each row shows an order and a unique product. Or in other words, notice here that we have several order IDs that are the same. So we could say that each order is a unique sale, or we could define each row, each product in an order as a unique sale. For purposes of what we're doing, we're going to say that each row represents a unique sale, and an order can have multiple sales. So for example, this one has just one order ID. It has one, two, three, four, five sales. So given that we're looking at each row, we can come back and put sales up on the row sheet. And this is the total quantity of sales, the total dollar value, but we want to know the total number. So we click on here. Instead of sum, we count. You can see that we have 51,290 sales. All right, what's the average sales size in the corporate segment for office supplies? Well, we need to look up segment. We'll put that up here. And then we need office supplies. Now, be careful you don't rush through this. You need to always look back at the pills and see what you're looking at. So this is the count of sale. We want the average sale size. So if I come up here and turn this to average, I get my answers. And what I want to see is corporate segment. That's this one in the middle. And then I need to look at office supplies. The average dollar sales amount is $122.
The third question is which segment and category had the highest sale? What was the amount of that sale? Okay, so we have our categories and segments up here, and we need to see which one had the highest sale. So we're not looking for the highest average sale or highest total sale, but the highest sale specifically. So I can come down and look at maximum. When I see that, I can quickly see that it was technology in the home office segment, and that they had a sale of 22,638. Now as a thought question, what would happen if I take segment and category off? Give you a second to think about that. So if I remove category, I will be getting the max sale by segment. And so if I remove this, technology should still have that same one. Because it was the highest in the segment and in the category, it would still be the highest in the segment. And similarly, if I remove segment, you can see that that one sale of 22,638 is the maximum sale. Out of every sale I did, this was the biggest. So there's the answers for those three. Uh, hopefully you're starting to feel comfortable with basic navigation in Tableau. So far we've shown you how to make a pretty basic graph. Now let's get into how to use Tableau to make some more interesting visualizations. So for example, we put sales on here in category and we made a nice bar chart. Next step is how do we make a different type of chart? There's a couple ways to do this. One is we can come over here on the right and click show me. And in here are a number of different types of preloaded graphs that we might want to use. So for example, we might want to use a pie chart or a circle view or a stacked bar. Each one of these does something different. And the nice part of Tableau is it shows over here for each one of these what you might want to need what you need for it. For a horizontal bar, you need dimensions and measures and it tells you how many. Now, sometimes that's helpful, but sometimes it still doesn't give you quite what you want. I'm going to rotate that back. So what we really want to do is dive into this marks card. So under marks, the first little box allows us to choose what we want it to show. So right now it's set to automatic. But we might want to say, instead of a bar chart, I want to turn it into a line chart. Or I want to put a shape on there. And then I could actually pick which shape. I want X's or stars instead of the, the other shape. Now this gets more useful when instead of having category up here, I put something like order date. Now you can see it defaults to a line graph. If I want, I can still turn it back into a bar chart and see what are my sales by year. But we'll go ahead and put it online. When I do this, up in columns, you'll also notice this little plus mark that appears by dates. Tableau's smart to recognize that we might want to break dates down into other dimensions or into to different levels of aggregation. So if I click on that, it will add quarters in. And so now I have order dates and quarters. And you can see that it's set up so that the dates, 2011, 12, 13, and 14, are grouped together and then the quarters. Well, if I care more about quarters first, I could see, well, what happened in the first quarter for each year versus the fourth quarter for each year? So again, I can click and drag these to different ways. And you can continue to expand this out if you want to look at months. And you can even take quarters out now. And so you could just have an annual look at things, or again, if we switch the order, we can see it in a different way. So that's one possibility. Now be aware that if I take year off, it's just going to show me the average or the sum of sales, total sales by month. Now this doesn't always have meaning. Uh, in this case it does. It so in January's, I have earned a total of 675,000, but that's not January's for each year. Now you can always go back by just clicking down on the carrot and pick which one you want and add another one this way. All right, we'll go ahead and drop that off. Now, you can also turn this from a discrete value, which means the blue shows discrete to a continuous value. And when I do that, it's going to now show me uh, over, over a time period. It gives me an axis instead of categories. And again, you can do the same thing by quarter, or you can come down and change it to day or, or whatever else you might want to do. Right, so that's a little bit about line graphs and how to change graphs. We're going to go ahead and, oh, not country, we'll go back to category and total sales. And I'm going to go back to just automatic leaving it a bar graph. So that shows you this first box here. The next one is color. And the nice thing with color is I can choose to have a different dimension displayed on here. So 
first thing I could do is just drag sales up to color and you can see that the height and the color tell me the same story so the tall dark one is where I have most sales the light short one is where I don't so where this gets interesting is instead of putting sales I put a different measure on there such as profitability so now the height tells me my sum of sales and the color tells me profitability and you can see office supplies are more profitable than furniture even though I haven't sold as much so now I can learn two things without having to, to have two graphs. So I could have done something like this, but I can just put it into a single graph by dropping it on color. Now you can change it from color by clicking on this and say, well, I'd rather use size, or I can even put it onto label. Now be careful when you do this. Size made sense because here the fatter one was more profitable than the skinny one. When I put it onto label, it can get deceiving. Because the first thing I think of when I see 663,000 is that's the height of this bar. But it's not. You can see in the tooltip that profit and sales are showing two different things. And it's real easy here. 518 is not smaller than 285. So if I was going to do this, I would put sales on the label. And then I would put profitability on color. So now I can get the idea of what are the two things going on without being very, con without confusing my uh, user of my visualization. Now the last one I'm going to talk about right now is tooltip. We'll come back to detail in a few minutes. But tooltip is remember when I, when I roll over this I get this tooltip. And in here say I want to take quantity and shipping cost and discount. I just hold control down to select those and I drop them all into my tooltip. Nothing changed on my visualization. But when I scroll over you can see that those items are now in the tooltip. So they may not be highly relevant to what's the decision, but I still may want that information available to somebody. So putting it in the tooltip is a good way to help people see that information and, and learn more about it. <coughs> Alright, the next thing to be aware about, aware of, we'll take those out of the tooltip, is that I can edit each one of these. If I click on color, I can go in and change for example, what color scheme I want to do. I'll do an orange-blue diverging. I can change and say I only want step colors versus continuous, reverse the color scale, etc., etc. So you can play around with those options. Even into advanced, there's a few more things you can do. With size, you can quickly change it so that you change all of the size. Or if I switch profits to size, I can do the same thing and it's going to scale them appropriately. Now on label, if I put We've got sales on label. I can click in here. I can edit it. I can change my font to be bigger or smaller. I can also change it so when, are, when does the label show up? Now it's only when it's highlighted or when it's selected. So there's other different options you can have for each one of these. And finally on tooltip when you click this it allows you to open up and edit. And You'll notice here are the name of an actual computation and here's just the regular text. You can insert whatever you want using this or just use the little caret signs to delineate what, what you want to display. Again, you can change it to be bold, you can change the color, we'll make that one a nice orange color, and so now when I scroll over it, my tooltip is in orange. Alright, so that covers the marks card. You're going to use this a lot, so it pays to become used to it and, and become very good with it. So to that end, we're going to give you a few more questions to work on. So number seven, make a line graph showing the number of sales per month. I guess it's not a question, but a task that we're going to have you do. And number eight, on a single bar graph, show the total sales and average profitability for each market. Now hint, you can show data using different attributes, such as color, size, etc. I don't want two graphs, and I don't want two lines on the graph. Instead, I want just a single line on the graph, and maybe use color or size to show sales and something else to show profitability. So go ahead and pause it. You can practice these, and then we'll go over how you can solve them when you unpause it. All right, hopefully that wasn't too challenging, and you're starting to figure Tableau out. Let's go over and make sure you know how, how to do these. So first one, make a line graph showing the number of sales per month. So I can put sales on here, and then I can put order date, and I can change that so that I just want sales per month. I can click on here, go down to sales per month, now if you interpreted the question to be you wanted years in there as well, you could put years in there and you could switch it the other direction. It's not really that clear exactly what to do, but, but there's an answer. 
Now, if you did this, you would have gotten the wrong answer because this is total sales per month. And the question actually asks for a number of sales per month. So I wanted to highlight that it's really easy to do this wrong by not seeing what the question is asking for. So on this one, you need number of sales per month, so you need a count. So now I can see here's the number of sales per month, or here's the number of sales, total sales in each given month. So just as a heads up, remember that when you, when you see these questions, you really pay attention to what it's asking. Number, average, total, etc. So the next one we need on a single bar graph to show the totals of sales and average profitability. Okay, so we have um, total sales. We'll turn that back into sum. Oops. And then we also want total profitability. So if I put total profitability up here, I have total profitability. And I wanted it by market. So now this is using two graphs. And there's some nice information here, but we want to visualize these on one. So now instead of having profit on as a row, I'm going to go ahead and just put it down as color. And it disappeared, so let's go ahead and drag it down there again onto color. And there I have it. Now notice when I have it down here, I can click on sales and sort that way. Or I can choose to click on profitability and sort by profitability. Now you'll notice the very subtle change. EMEA and Africa switch directions because one of them is more profitable than the other when I sorted that differently. All right, so that's one way to do it. You could put s profit on size. It's not the easiest to see with size, so I probably wouldn't highly recommend that. Uh, it would not be smart to put it on labels for the reasons we previously discussed. All right, you'll notice in the tooltip, because we edited it from last time, it doesn't automatically change that. So if we did want to change that, we'd have to click on here, clicking reset. Uh, we'll go back to putting profit and sales on there. Just by default, it will display any of the measures in the tooltip unless you edit it. So that's how we answer those two questions. And so now we're ready to move on. And to move on, rather than teach you some more, I want one more different type of practice question. For this one, what I want you to do is to make this visualization. So carefully look over this visualization. Make sure you look at everything that's there, the axes, what are in the different axes, what's in the, the, the legend, what's inside the tooltip, and see if you can make a visualization that looks exactly like this. All right, recommend pausing the video, trying to make this, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I did it. All right, hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Uh, you've unpaused it and, and you're learning out how to do this, but let's go ahead and look at Tableau and look what the answer looks like. So I pulled up and here is the visualization that I, we were supposed to make. You'll notice that I put total sales on the rows and you could tell that because it was on this axis. I put market on the columns and again you could see that that was supposed to be there. Now important to realize when the tooltip is there, that helps you see what needs to go inside the tooltip. Well, before that, let's, let's do color. Over here you can see some of profit was up there, so you know you need to drag profit onto color. So now that we have the right colors, you take it off, that makes that legend go away. So now you can see that we had the right color. Uh, you can see on top we have sales listed, and you could see that in the tooltip that the sales on this one 2.164 million were the same as the, the amount on there. So dragging sum of sales up to the label in the marks uh, card would do that. And then finally making sure that you got the right tooltip. So putting in the discount and the shipping costs and going in and making sure you edit it so that that's, they're in the exact same order as what was displayed on the visualization. So that's the basics of how we made this visualization. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, the last thing in the marks card we haven't talked about is this detail tab. So when I put sales in here in a column, it just gives me the total of sales. And this detail is telling us at what level to aggregate. So in this case, it's adding up all the sales um, all together, every single row. Now sometimes we want to show detail at a different level. So let's go ahead and look at an X y graph, a scatter plot. This is to see what's the relationship between two variables. So let's look at sum of sales and profit. When I put that up there, we can see that the relationship between these two is a single dot. And what that did is it summed up all of the sales and all of the profits together and showed me the single plot of that dot. Now what I really want is to see the plot of every single one of my lines. 
So you go back to the data source, every single row I would like plotted on here so that I can see what's the relationship between profit and sales for every single line item. Now to do that, what I need to do is use this detail in the marks card. Now every row is uniquely identified by a row ID, so if I click and drag that on detail, it will now plot every single row. And you can see that up here, this is a single instant. There was a pro sale of $17,500 and it made a profit of $8,400. Or conversely, a bad one, we made a sale of $4,500 and we lost $6,600. Don't ask me how that happened, that is really bad business. So I can aggregate the detail at different levels. If I put on here, um, let's say country, I'm going to get a separate dot for every country. So here's the United States, high sales, high profits. And here's New Zealand, low sales, lower profits. And here's Turkey, lots of sales, but we're losing money. So the level of detail tells me how I want to aggregate the data. Now, if I, Tableau is, is smart that if I use country instead put it on color, I add all my members, it's going to do the same thing as putting it on detail, except it will also put color. So it aggregates to whatever the level it needs to to show all of the information. Now that said, I can go ahead and put row ID back on detail. And this just warns you, if you have a really big data set, if you put it on detail, sometimes it'll take forever. But then I could put, for example, uh, we'll just do market on color. Now with market on color, I can see Africa's concentrated down here. Asia Pacific region moves out here. Purple US, you've got a lot more of your high sales and high profitability out there. So now we get a better idea of what's going on because of how we aggregate it and use, use detail. Now, the XY graph is, is particularly interesting because it's to help us get a, a relationship. Or you can think of it, we can create a regression. What's the effect of sales on profitability? So to do that, we'll just briefly go over this. We have this new tab up here called Analytics. This allows me to put lines on my, on my visualization and all sorts of things. So for example, what's the average size of sale? I can go ahead and put that in on the table and there I can see my average sale is 29. And click on it and I'm going to remove because what I'm really interested is what's the relationship here so I want the trend line. If I click on that, I'll just do a linear trend. I put that on there and this is fitting the best line to minimize the space between all the dots. If you remember back to a statistics class and a regression. And if you mouse over it or click on it, you can see here is the regression. Profit, or for every dollar of sales, profit goes up by 0.173394. That means for every sale, I make about 17 cents of profit. And you have R squared and P value, which have the standard statistical interpretation. So now I can see there's a positive relation. The more sales I have, the more profits I'll have. Now, what's cool with these trend lines or and, and regression lines is I can still use my other marks. So for example, I'm going to pick market and drop it on color, and it will give me a different trend line for every single market. So now wh what's the interpretation? Well, this trend line, yellow, is Latin America. Each time I make a sale in Latin America, I make about 15 cents. However, each time I make a sale in Canada, I make 31 cents. So, from a business perspective, I need to really move sales into Canada. Really try to gear that up because I make a great profit margin for every sale I make in Canada. South America, uh, or Latin America, I, I've got some more issues down there that I could work on. Africa, again, very profitable. So, that's how we use detail, and that's also how we use analytics. All right, let's show you another example with detail. I'll open a new sheet, and this time I'm going to create a box and whisker plot. Now to do that, I need a measure, and, and then I'll show you where we go from there. So I'm going to look in this time at discounts. I'll put discounts up here, and now notice I still can't do a box and whisker plot because it, below it says I need at least one dimension or disaggregate. So to disaggregate, I can use this button right here. So I'm going to disaggregate every single sale by putting row ID on there and then turning it into a box plot. And I can click here to turn it into a box plot the easiest way. And I can see for my total sales, here's the discounts. Now, if you remember from blocks plots, they show you the median 
And they also give you this interquartile range so, and so show you outliers. Now what I'm really concerned about is are there some of my employees that are giving too many discounts? Or maybe they're inflating sales because they give lots of discounts. So to do that, I can come down to this people, grab person and put them up on column. And sure enough, I can see some very big discrepancies. Chuck is offering a lot more variability in their discounts versus Nicole, Nora, and Shirley who offer very few discounts to anybody. Now, is that good or bad? Well, it depends on the business situation. I might want to say, well, they need to start adding more uh, discounts or maybe they need to start having less. But this is a quick way to disaggregate the data using detail and see how they're making these sales discounts uh, for all of the different transactions we have. So with that, we're now ready to try a few more questions. So I have the next three questions. What is the relation between profit and quantity? That is, if we ship more, do we make more profit? And how much more for each item shipped? Number 11, for which category is the relationship in number 10, this question up here, largest? Said differently, for which category do we make the most profit if we ship more items in each order? And finally, which category of products offers the greatest range of discounts? What is the difference in the upper and lower whisker? So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can answer each one of those questions. All right, welcome back. Let's see if we can answer these questions. Let's go to Tableau. We'll open up a new sheet. Now, what's the relation between profit and quantity? So I can put profit up as a row, quantity up as that. I've got my, my single aggregation, and I want to see it disaggregated by row. And there's all of my information. Now, this is going to tell me the effect of quantity on profit. And so what I need to now do is add a line. So I'll come in here and add my trend line, a linear trend line. And if I click on that, we'll see that the relationship is positive, And each time I ship an item, I make an additional $7.98. So what I'd like to do is ship more items together um, or sell more items at the same time of the same item, and, and I'll make more profit. All right. Now, the next question was building off of this, and it asked which category is the relationship uh, strongest. So as we did before, I can just take category, and I'll go ahead and put it on colors. And I can see I get the different colors popping out all over. You'll see the red line is the strongest. And so uh, the answer is for the technology category. If I look at red, it's technology. And, and that's the answer for the second one. Now finally, which category of products offers the greatest range of discounts? Okay, To do this, I need to do something a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to look at discounts. Go ahead and put that up in my rows. <coughs> Excuse me. And with the discounts in there, I need a box and whisker plot. So let's go ahead and put it detail for all the rows. And I'll put my box and whisker plot up there. Now, which category of products? Again, I'll need category. I put my categories up there. And which one has the, the widest range? From the upper and lower whisker, well, you can see the lower whisker of all of them is zero. The upper whisker for furniture is the highest. So furniture is the highest. And if you do the computation in here, the upper whisker is 0.6, lower whisker is zero, so 0 0.60. So if we open up our question answers, there's the answer to each one. Uh, and just as I showed, I thankfully got them all right. All right, the next area I'd like to talk about is what do you do if a measure isn't included in your data set? So for example, what if I want to know the profit per sale? Well, I could take profit and divide it by sales, but I don't have that in my data set. So I could go back to Excel, open it up, run the calculation, re-import the data, and do all that work. Instead, there's an easier way to do it in Tableau. If you right-click, you can create a calculated field. So for this example, I want to say, what's the profit percentage per sale? So I'll name it profit percentage per sale. And then this works just like Excel would in creating formulas. So here, I'm going to say, I can do it two ways. I'll say, well, take profit in here and divide it. Or I could start just typing in sales and select that one. And you'll see the brackets show that it's an actual measure in there. Now over here, 
if this screen is not open. These are all sorts of different formulas. And we'll get more into that at a later point, but for right now, just be aware that you can also do a whole bunch of formulas. So now, what does this do? When I click OK, I now have a new measure down here. And it's creating, it's creating a new row in the data. You won't see it in the data source, but it's adding a new column. Well, it does. I was wrong. It does add a new column in here, profit percentage per sale. So now I have the profit percentage for each different sale, each line item. So if I come back here, I can say, well, what's the profit percentage per sale? And I can click and drag that up to my rows. And there I have it. Now, that doesn't make much sense because it's summing up the profit percentage per sale. So it wouldn't make sense to sum it, but it might make sense to take the average. So on an average sale, I make about 4 point or 4 cents, 4.7 cents per sale. All right, does that differ by category? And I can use this just like I'd use anything else. Sure enough, for furniture, I don't make much profit per sale, but for office supplies, I make a lot of profit per sale. So that's again how you create a measure. Right click, create calculated field, and then do whatever formula you want. You can also create new dimensions. So I can create a calculated field, and we're just going to call this one year. Now there's a formula called year, notice the function, where I can put in a date, we'll put in order date, and it will extract the year. So now when I click OK, it puts year down here, and if you go over to the data source, it just added year. Now Sometimes you want year to be a measure, sometimes you want it to be a dimension. You can click and move them, and I can just move it up, and now it's a dimension. So now I can treat it and see category by year, and sure enough, there's how my average profit per sale in each category changed per year. It looks like furniture is getting better after a rough start. Uh, office supplies trended up and not so great now, and who knows what's going on with technology. A little bit lumpy there. But again, you can create either dimensions or measures using these calculated fields. So with that, I have a couple more questions for you. First, which countries have the highest and lowest average non-shipping costs per line item, and what are those costs? And then number 14, which country has the highest per line item median shipping costs as a percentage of sales price? What is the amount? Let's go ahead and pause the video and see if you can answer those questions. All right, you're back. Let's see how you did. So let's go ahead and open up Tableau. And the first thing we need to do is calculate what are the non-shipping costs per line item. So to do that, I'm going to create a calculated field. And as smart accountants, you know that sales minus expenses equals profits. So we just rearrange the formula a little bit, do sales minus profits equals expenses, but then we also need to take off the shipping costs to get the non-shipping costs. So we'll call this non-shipping cost expenses. All right. And so I can take that non-shipping costs expenses, put that on my rows, and now I want to know who has the lowest average non-shipping costs. So let's go ahead and create an average. And which countries? So I can take countries, put that on there. We're going to rotate it and sort. And my answer is Lesotho has the highest average non-shipping cost expenses of 750. And then if I sort it the other way, the lowest is going to be Armenia at 24.7. All right, so now let's answer the next question. What country has the highest per line item median shipping cost as a percentage of sales price? What is the amount? So the first thing I need to do is calculate shipping cost as a percentage of sales price. So we'll come in here. We'll call this shipping costs as percentage. Oops of sales price. So shipping cost is a percentage of sales price. Go ahead and I create that new measure. And I can go ahead and put that up here. And now I want the median. So I go in here and edit that. I now have the median. And then I need to know which country has the highest per line item. So again, I take country, move that in here, flip and sort it. Central African Republic. 0.1859. So go ahead and put those answers up on the screen so you can see my answers to, to both of those. And that's how we answer those and create calculated fields. All right, the next thing I'd like to cover is filters. You'll see this card up here. 
Filters allow us to do exactly what it sounds like, filter data. So let's just go ahead and put an easy one up here. Sales, and we're going to go ahead and put by country. And I'm going to put region in front of country so you can see here's all these different regions. Now this is unwieldy to look at. So what if I only want to display a certain region? So what I can do is I can click and put regions in filters. And it'll open up this nice dialog box and it'll allow me to pick which regions I want to use. So in this case, I will um, select from, oh, none, there it is, none. And I'll say I just want those in the Africa region. I click apply and voila, now I only have countries in the African region. I sort it, and I have a little bit more interesting visualization to see sales by countries in Africa. Now, if you come back up to this filter, you'll notice there's a number of different things. So I could put a wild card, and so I can just search. So anything that has a certain letter combination or word, I can put other conditions and just say I want the top values or, um, or different conditions here. The top values are, are under here. So this allows me to have quite a bit of flexibility in filtering. Now, that's an easy one, so I just did filters by Africa. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off, and we'll just leave region in here and sort it. But now let's say I want to filter by dates. So if I go ahead and put order dates up here, I get this um, filter screen, and there's some differences. The green means continuous, or the blue means as a discrete. So if I click on blue first, I could say, I just want to filter by years, and I only want to see 12, 2011 and 2014. I apply that, and not a lot happened. However, if I put order date up here for years, you'll see the only order dates that show up are for 2011 and 2014. Now, for this one, I'll go ahead and reset it, or cancel, just take it off and put it back in so I can show you the other ones. If I select it as a continuous, the green, I can say, here's a range of dates. And then I can pick, well, I only want to see things through January 2012 through December of 2013. And again, you can use starting date, ending date, or any of these other possibilities. So now I put order date up here. And I can turn it to continuous. And you can just see kind of the same sort of thing happens. All right, we'll talk more about continuous discrete at a later date. So that's dates. The final one is you can filter by measures. So right now I'm looking at sales, and maybe I only want to look at sales that are profitable. So if I click on sales, I can now select all values, or I can aggregate. And so we'll show you first all values. If I click on that, I can pick the range of values least special. So here I only want to sum if the individual rows are positive. So if I put zero up, so what it's doing is it will go in and to the data source, it will pull out every row that has a value for sales below zero and exclude it and then just sum them up. So now when I click apply, here's the profit from all of my positive sales. I'll go ahead and pull that off. Now it's a little bit different if I put profit up here and I select it, now I will be summing um, or and I use one of these below all values, I will be aggregating first and then filtering. So for example, if I click sum and next, if I look on here, I'm going to pick 100,000. So I only want to show the regions that had more than 100,000. And when I click on that, you'll see all of these ones down here dropped off that didn't have 100,000. I'll go ahead and put them back. They came on because I'm filtering after the aggregation. So important to realize when you put a filter in here, um, a, a measure of what you're filtering on, either the aggregated amount or the non-aggregated amount. Now do realize you can stack filters. So I could filter by country and say, I just want to see these first few countries. And then I could also then filter by something else, for example, profit again, and I'm going to filter all values and I only want those that are positive applying that you can see here's the positive sales that I had in these countries um, and which regions they belong to alright so that gives you a little bit of idea with filtering there's a lot you can do with it but let's go ahead and give you a few final questions on that 
So number 15, what model refrigerator has the highest average profit? Now, you're going to have to use one of those wild cards or, or search within for refrigerator as the term. And what was the average profit and how many units were sold? 16, what shipping mode had the largest decrease in average shipping cost between 2011 and 2014? Now you can just use this graphically to see which one has the largest decrease. You don't actually have to compute it, but just you can look graphically. And then finally, make a viz that shows a total sales for each product name that sold more than 200 total items. Go ahead and pause and see if you can answer those. All right, let's try to answer these questions. So open up Tableau, got a new sheet. Which model refrigerator had the highest average profit? So let's go ahead and put profit up there. And we want to turn it to average before we forget. And now we need to see model of refrigerator. So if I come in here and I pull up product name and I put it in filters, I can go through and try to pick each one that has refrigerator, or I can go to wildcard and just search refrigerator. Make sure it contains that and apply. All right, so now I can see that my average profit for refrigerators is $193. Now, which one is it? If I come and grab product name, put it on columns, and sort that. Oh, let's turn it this way so I can see a little bit easier, too. It's the Sonya Counter Height Refrigerator with CRISPR 3.6 cubic foot stainless steel black. That one has the highest average profit um, per sale. Now it also asked what was the average profit which is the 551.3 and how many units were sold. So how do I figure out how many units were sold? Well I can come and just pick any one of these. I'll just go ahead and put sales up there. Oh no, sorry. And how many units were sold. That's not how many sales were made, how many units were sold. So quantity. Drag that up here, sum up my quantity and I can see that I sold 18 of that particular unit. Again be careful did it want how many units were sold or how many sales? If it wanted how many sales, then you would just count rather than sum. All right, so that's the answer to number 15. Number 16, what shipping mode had the largest decrease in average shipping cost between 2011 and 2014? All right, so let's start by putting a new sheet out there. Had the largest decrease in shipping costs. So let's put shipping costs up here and it's average shipping costs. So we'll go ahead and go to average. And then it's between 2011 and 2014. So we'll go ahead and put our order date on here. And we're going to pick years. 2011, 2014. Apply that. And then I can put my years up here. And I also need to see shipping mode. Put that up here. And let's switch the order of those. So I can see that between 2011 and 2014, shipping costs dropped the most for first class. Same day, second class, and standard class were pretty flat, but it was first class. All right, so the third one. Make a viz that shows the total sales for each product name that sold more than 200 total items. Okay, so let's go ahead and put product names up on my rows. And then I need total... 200 items, so we'll put quantity up there. And I can sort by that. So now I could kind of go down here and visually do this, or I can go ahead and put quantity, the sum of quantity on here. Now I want that sold more than 200 total items, so I want the sum, and I could go ahead and put in here 200 items, apply that, and there's my answer. It's all of these companies right here. Now again, notice on this one how I did that. When I put quantity up here, I selected sum because I'm trying to filter based on the total. If I wanted to filter, for example, all product names that sold more than uh, 10 items in an order or in a specific line item at a time, I'd click OK and then I have a much longer list um, that, that has all those values. All right, so that's the answer to, to that question. And we're now ready to go to a summary. So if we come back up here, what have we learned today? Well, we went over why visualizations are important. Just kind of a very high level idea that, that why they're useful. We went over the basics of importing data and also how to save Tableau files. Make sure you save them as packaged workbook files. Basic navigation and creation of various chart types. 
We then went over a number of different skills, sorting, rotating, computing various amounts, for example, the sum, average, median, etc. We talked extensively of how to use the marks card, um, created calculated fields, and used filters. So hopefully this is kind of an overview, get you started so that you can now start using Tableau with a little bit more confidence. And then from here we can start building more advanced skills. Thank you very much.